Welcome back everyone to the Coalition for Marriage YouTube channel. If you're joining us for the first time, you might like to know we are the UK's largest pro-marriage organization representing tens of thousands of individuals and groups who stand up for this thing, one man, one woman marriage. And yes, other things do happen in society, of course they do, but we think that there's something special and unique about what one man and one woman can do. That can't be re replicated by any other type of relationship. All the evidence seems to suggest it's worth preserving and promoting in society. And that's what we're here to do. And some other people who want to preserve and promote such thoughts often find life really, really difficult. And we talk to some of those people on this channel. Rarely do we talk to somebody who's as young as our, our guest today. It's a real privilege to welcome uh, Eddie Mihet. Uh, Eddie, would you like to say hello to our viewers and our listeners? Hello, everyone. Now, Eddie, uh, as I understand it, you, you, you've you lived uh, for all your life, really, in uh, Dumfries, in Scotland, although uh, your parents come from Romania, which is quite interesting, uh, and you were attending a a Catholic high school in your local area. I thought we would um, just have a conversation because we we discussed recently about your experience in high school, uh, and you were attending. Uh, you live in Dumfries. You were attending a local uh, uh, Catholic, as it were, religious yes, it was, high school. It was a Catholic in fact. high school. Yeah, which. You, you had to leave in the end um, uh, under very difficult circumstances because, mm -hmm. uh, as I understand it, you, f you felt it was incompatible for you to stay there um, being somebody who has Christian beliefs around marriage, um, yes. marriage be being between a man and a woman. And that turned out to, to, to be incompatible with you remaining at this faith-based school. So, Eddie, we'll, we'll have a chat with you, if that's okay, about your experience. Uh, and then we'll, at the end, we'll finish off uh, with a, a brief update from your uh, father, Daniel, about how he felt, uh, how your parents felt about all these things uh, and the situation um, you experienced. So, Eddie, can you tell us a little bit about wh when, did, when did all this kick off? How long ago did this start? You're, you're 17 now, right? Yes, I'm currently 17, yeah. Yeah. So how old were you when this when this began to kick off in school? So I would say when I first started high school, which would be my first year, um, where I think I believe I was 13 when when I first started high school. That's when we heard to the announcements that we had regularly about LGBT. And yeah. when mentioning LGBT and when LGBT was mentioned, often the term sexuality was mentioned. And it was clearly in, in regards to relationships. And these relationships were outside of marriage, so I give them respect for that. But yeah. regardless, it was that's when I first heard it. This wasn't just normal sex education lessons, which you could expect might happen in any high school. You're saying this this kind of came around outside of those lessons and and in all sorts of different places. It kept coming up. Yes, yeah, so it was it was mentioned quite frequently uh, frequently through the announcements, just generally, not mm. too detailed, and it would be quite encouraged for students. And they would be told the lecturers would, would make sure that students would know about groups, LGBT groups that they could become right. a part of. But right. this was actually more interesting than it wasn't really verbal all the time. It was really also with posters throughout the high school mm -hmm. that were really visible, really up front there. Did they also talk about the benefits of, of man woman marriage as well and, and how that brings about the best outcomes for, for young children and, and the idea of saving sex for marriage? And did those things come up as well or, or? No, not from what I remember. It was really just relationships outside of marriage. Uh, from your upbringing, from your home, from your background, I'm guessing you kind of felt uh, this feels a little bit awkward. So, so what happened? Did you say something? Did you do something? I mean, how did things kick off? Well, I, I believe through my second year of high school, we were we were now being taught about this more detailed through classes that were either religious education, but more uh, frequently through social. Um, if I remember, the class name was social education. And through these means of classes, we would be taught this. Uh, but what happened was how this blew up really for myself was we had a class for social education class as usual. And some students and that, that means senior students of high school volunteered to come and explain different, explain LGBT, more, more specifically transgenderism to us okay. as a classroom and this was 
supervised by a lecturer, but we were given we were given many questions that we had to answer in a way that everyone could see. And this involves standing up and sitting down. And some of the questions were really, you know, really shocking. For example, can a four-year-old change their sex? That's when it was more more detailed for all of us as students. And, and we were all, we were all, you know, I can only speak on my own behalf. I was really certainly shocked. Now I stood down, I couldn't stand up to say if I agree with this. And standing down, I was naturally, you know, visibly, you know, everyone could see I'm disagreeing with this. Let me just clarify, Eddie. So the people who agreed with it were asked to stand up. Yes. So if you didn't agree with it, it was very visible to the rest of the class. Yes. So that's an awful lot of social pressure in that kind of situation. But you remained seated. I, I couldn't stand up, not in my own yeah, conscience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, that's... F- and, and so you were like 14, 15 at that time? Yes, I believe I was 14. Yeah, well, what a, what a brave lad to, to buck the trend there. That's quite interesting. So what happened after that? And I imagine similar things took place. During the class, there were more questions given and I was approached. I was approached by the teacher, the lecturer, um, with a note. And this note described um, the hate crime bill, I believe, or the hate crime 2010. And this note was really saying that, you know, disagreement is, could be a criminal offense. So that got me more upset and and anxious. And I brought, I brought it to my dad, the note after. Yeah. Coming from a Romanian background, I remember uh, in Romanian schools, it was used the same practice when we were uh, in the, um, in the school. Communist regime. Yes. Uh, What have you done children on Sunday? So every Monday, the the teachers will ask us, what have you done on Sunday? It was the only day off from, uh, from job because people were working uh, six hours, six days a week. And obviously, when it got to maybe three or four of us that we were from Christian families, we, we had to say we've been to church and then we will be bullied and intimidated and to me, the, the laughing stock in the class uh, because of the teacher. How can you believe in these fairy tales? Why would you lose your time going to church? Don't you have something better to do? And uh, the same uh, procedure was applied here. Uh, by by intimidation and um, that that's where uh, I I found it uh, a bit very very strange in a free country that this is still the case. Yeah, so red flags immediately yes. for you a right father away, who, yes. who'd, who'd grown up in a communist intervene. regime. Yes, my parents could didn't say too much at the time because it was totalitarian regime. But I said this time we have a voice, we have to use it. Us yeah, parents, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much for that. Tell us, Eddie, um, h- how do things progress from there then? So, I mean, that's pretty rough for a, for a young yeah. young boy, you know, a, a mid-teenager to be humiliated in front of all your class and, and asked to account for your, you know, that's quite tough. Um, so how did things go from there? Were you left alone after that or did it progress? This wouldn't have been as big if it had not been for the school to mention fight homophobia. We need to tackle homophobia. And naturally, this pushed everything to an, to another extreme because students were no longer agreeing to disagreeing. Students now carried their disagreement to a new level, and that was combating, you know, my opinions. And this unfortunately led to bullying, verbal bullying. Uh, and yes, yeah. and throughout the years, it got, unfortunately, through the social media, and they got yeah. physical, yeah. And for kids these days, you mentioned social media. There's no escape, is there? Because it doesn't stop at the school boundaries. It you does know? not. Social, no. social media is there all the time. So you found you were, um, the school was almost encouraging people to dividing people up. And, and ironically, simply because you disagreed with somebody else's ideology doesn't mean you hate and fear, but people were encouraged to hate and attack you because of your disagreement, which is so ironic. So, okay, so tell us what happened then. I mean, you were you were facing bullying from your fellow students. Yes. Um, and at the behest of what's going on in the school. And so what happened? It wasn't just social media extended to, extended to my own door. It came that quite frequently, even now, I'm, I'm, I'm not even sure who came, 
but they would come to our door and they would knock on our door and the knocking became kicking and this was banging yes wow so people a group came of to 10, your of home 10, 15 people's uh, pupils usually a group of 15 people came to your home as a direct result and kicked on your front door simply because you said you disagreed that a boy can become a girl or vice versa. Mm -hmm. did, did you uh, report this to the school? Did you report this to, to the police? What, 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 what action happened? I reported this first to my first level of command and it was ignored, unfortunately. And again, another scenario occurred where now social media, there was photos of me and I was portrayed as a homosexual. And this then I reported because it was another form of bullying. And I don't know how far it extended. I don't know how many pictures were sent of me. And it was ignored again. And after this, you know, unfortunately, the police, I had to, the police got involved because student support, which this time it was one of the deputy head teachers. He was very friendly. He was very understanding. And he took the time to ensure that this situation is dealt as good as possible and he recommended the police to be involved. So police got involved. Uh, I, I just want to cover over the fact here. You, you hadn't said or done anything offensive. You hadn't attacked people verbally or otherwise. No, I have. I've never I've never any any time hit anyone and yeah. verbally. I do not recall ever, you know, using yeah. their means that they used against me. Yet what you received in response was um, not, not what you'd call accepting and tolerance, is it really? Of course not, no. Um, so, okay, you've got the police involved. Um, how, where, where's the story go from there? The police recommended and the deputy head teacher recommended that I would extract myself from these online social platforms and I would refrain, you know, from even having a form of link or communication to these students. Yeah. And that's, that's exactly what I, I had to do. I had to make sure that my social media became private. I had to make sure that I could, you know, delete these comments that were public for everyone to see as good as possible. And I had to then talk more with my deputy head teacher because my education was at risk here because socially I wasn't, I wasn't really fit. Socially I was affected. Oh, I, I'm, I'm sure you were, Eddie. It was a nightmare and I had to talk with my head deputy head teacher and he established that it would be better for me to drop my grades that I was currently studying that was on my national fives and then I had to go down to national fours but this this only gave me about a month's time a month's time to catch up on a whole years of studies thankfully I managed to to get the grades, but it was very oh, stressful well for you. me. Um, you ended up leaving the school, um, as I understand it. So what what age were you when you left and, and what kind of precipitated you leaving? How did that all work? Tell us a bit about that. I'm younger, unfortunately, than more of my students. So I left actually at 15. So and you're quite, you're young in your year. I yeah. was very yeah, younger than yeah. others in my yeah. year. And leaving at 15, I managed to then progress with my current gained qualification towards college. You left because you felt you couldn't carry on in that school because the situation against you. Uh, was was anyone sticking up for you? Were, were any teachers sticking up for you? Were any students on your side? I left this group of people when I became a child of God, saved as a Christian. Uh, having left having left this, I changed my, my perspective on things. And that's when I would say my deputy head teacher could also he had more respect to the situation because he saw that, look, I'm now on my own. I've really detached myself from anything, anything that could, you know, be used against me that could fuel things worse. And he, he was my only, no students. He was my only helper in this whole scenario. Wow. Wow. So no, no other students were in the same position as you. Nobody else was saying the same thing as you. You were completely on your own. Yes. I mean, it's, it's been a little while now, uh, not too long because you're only 17 and you're in, you're in a separate college now doing your Scottish hires. Um, so, so well done. What subjects are you doing, by the way? So I'm currently studying business management. Well, that's marvellous. And, and 
uh, as far as you know, the school are carrying on down the same old road. Uh, as far as they're concerned, no repercussions. They don't care. Um, Eddie's gone, makes it easier for us to carry on. Who cares? Yes, unfortunately. And I'm really not sure how they're doing now, but uh, I'm from, from what I hear from other schools, I would presume they're, as you've said, they're continuing. Well, Eddie, you're not alone. And up and down the country, there are, there are kids in schools uh, for whom the social pressure to comply is just too much. You know, they've got to do and say what the others are doing and saying, just like your dad was saying in a communist regime, the, the cost of, of, of standing, or in your case, sitting, is just too high. Um, well, you know, Ed, it's a real privilege to talk to you. Thinking back, I mean, you, you've, you've expressed a little bit about how it affected you emotionally, how it's affected you educationally. Um, is there anything you think you would have done different um, you know, looking back and lessons learned, or are there any messages you'd want to give to young people in a similar situation? I could, I, I would like to also include uh, for this scenario that uh, find something I, I forgot to include was that it really got quite upsetting for me more when having left this, the group of friends that I was in, there was many rumors spread like wildfire around me as in many other situations in high schools, they normally do. And this caused death threats to come to me from people that were not involved at all, who were neither LGBT or who were neither from the friend group I was involved. And this happened This happened twice, and this was really why the police got involved. And this is really also why I had to leave, because even if I would, would have stayed, there was already too much damage caused. So for young people, if my advice for them, if they are in a situation similar to me, it would be to make sure that they can do the right decision, to make sure that they are responsible for themselves. They can have a good conversation with their parents. They can be transparent about these issues, first to their parents, and they should be comfortable enough to go to the school, not alone, but with parents, and to, do it, to address the situation formally. Because in my case, I addressed this as a student and I was ignored the first few times. But when my parents got involved, which I thank God they got involved, and I thank God that I have loving parents who, who want the best for me in a society that doesn't, they came with me. And when the students, no, I mean, the, when the lecturers saw this, they realized, okay, well, we have, to, we have to take this on board. We have to listen to Eddie's opinions and we have to treat the situation the right way. Wonderfully, you come from a loving family who you have good communication with and you're able to share these things and they will stand by you and back you up. And as we, as we go around and talk to lots of different people all over the country, that's the thing that makes a difference um, is just speaking up and parents writing into schools and saying, hold on, what's this about? you know, uh, uh, we disagree with this and it, we're perfectly within our legal right to disagree with this. And your obligation is to make sure that we're not bullied or ostracized for having done so. Um, and the school clearly failed you on that count, I think, Eddie, from what you're telling me. Yeah, unfortunately. I sense from talking to you, Eddie, that, well, first of all, you're, you're a pretty resilient guy for having remained seated in the first place. Uh, and I sense that this is this has given you wisdom and it's given you strength and it's made you uh, a wise and courageous young man. And I, I really applaud you for everything you've stood for, Eddie. I, I just think you've done a wonderful job and thank you so much for talking to us today. Thank you very much. And I thank God for all the strength that he's given us as a family and, and many other students in my position. And all, all, I would say from a Christian standpoint, glory be to God for all things. Wonderful. Eddie, what a privilege to talk to you. Take care. Thank you very much. Do you, want to, do you want to come on camera and tell us a little bit about your, your experience from a parent, parent's point of view? Yeah, as a parent, uh, I can say that uh, from my own dealings uh, with, uh, with the school, with, with, with the teachers, uh, Ed is not uh, that aware of uh, when I, I call the school to request a meeting face to face, when they inquired what's all about and I explained about the situation that happened in the class. Um, they reply back by saying, uh, we, we, we cannot have this, it's the COVID rules, and uh, you, we cannot have a meeting face-to-face. -face. I said at least in a Zoom meeting, it wasn't possible to have it in a Zoom. 
And right on the spot, I've been told uh, that these kind of procedures, you know, with standing up or sitting down uh, in order to, to show your answer, it's it's more challenging, but it's been approved and uh, re- demanded by the Minister of the de- Education. And children, they need to toughen up. So huh. it's not a big deal for Eddie that he T- had to... Toughen up, accept the death threats, exactly, accept yes, the mobs exactly. coming around your house. And, toughen up. Yes, oh, exactly. Oh my goodness. Toughen up and toughen up did he... He did. So praise the mm. Lord for that, uh, because mm. it worked all things together for good. Eddie, it's a totally mm. different child from that point mm. of view. Yeah, well, that that's, was his that's encounter amazing. with God and to see the power of yeah. God uh, at work in his yeah. life. But that exactly, this was the, the answer. Very straight to your face, this way, toughen up. And uh, thank God that uh, then the deputy head teacher changed and he took the matter in his own hands with a different approach. But it took a while until we got to that stage because I got a bit of a righteous anger. <laughs> and as a result of that day, they allowed to have a zoom meeting with my wife with the head teacher uh, uh, as well not and then the head teacher um, said yes you are allowed to to withdraw the child from all the classes it wasn't just that social education class it was religious class that they will teach learn about anything but christianity and then you you will have uh, for example, yoga classes, when uh, the children will be requested to do the exercises on the mattress in, in the in the class. And Eddie said he cannot do that. So this is not just LGBT, it's the whole walk yeah. Uh, yeah. agenda in, in yeah. infiltrating in, in the schools. And yeah. uh, credit to Eddie that yeah. he was strong enough and sensitive, yeah. uh, sensible, sensitive enough to all this threats to yeah. Christianity and he yeah. stood uh, against them. And, and a credit to you as a parent to who who's come from the background, a backdrop of growing up in a communist regime to spot the red flags of, well, it's happening here too. I thought this was a free country. You, you just smell, when you've been, you know, 17 years I've been through this in, in Romania, you, you just smell these this sort of things. Uh, the the Marxist agenda behind all these things that maybe it's not so easy to be detected for somebody who has not been ever exposed like you know uh, society here in, in in the UK in the Western world and, and that's the irony because we'll teach them all these things in school but we don't teach them what happened mm-hmm. in uh, you know in Soviet Russia in in Romania in um, in in Maoist China. You know, and how, uh, you know, uh, around 100 million people were murdered by the state because they didn't think correctly. Mm. You know, and these are important things for kids to learn and important signs for kids to spot. Amen. Yeah. So well done you. Listen, excellent stand by you and by Eddie. Such a privilege to talk to you both. Thank you so much for your time today. Uh, Thank you for, uh, for your time as well. Great.